Well, hi again, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. And I'm going to talk today about daylight saving time. This has become kind of controversial lately. People are getting tired of having to adjust to changing the times on their clocks twice a year. And it can take a toll on, on uh, your sleep schedule and uh, just your, your sense of fatigue and stress and, and all of that stuff when you have to suddenly adjust to uh, getting up an hour earlier or an hour later, and also going to bed an, an hour earlier or an hour later, depending on what the adjustment is. Uh, but there are some reasons why maybe daylight saving time is still a good idea. So I thought I'd talk about it just, just for a moment. Now, here we call it daylight saving time. Uh, the proper name is daylight saving time, not daylight savings. But uh, there you go. And in some places they call it summertime. But what it's all about is uh, taking advantage of uh, the change of seasons and how that affects the amount of daylight that we get on any given day. So in the summertime, of course, uh, here, here where I am in Utah, uh, sunrise and sunset means you've got about uh, 15 hours of daylight every day uh, on uh, you know, the peak day, I guess, uh, of, of the summer. Whereas in the winter time, you only get about nine hours of daylight. So that variation means that you've got a lot of extra daylight in the summer, and maybe you could be um, uh, more efficient with that extra daylight that you get in the summertime. And that's kind of what daylight saving time is all about. In effect, uh, well, let's, let's just take uh, your, your typical office job schedule. You want to get there at nine o'clock and check out at five o'clock, and then you're home. Okay, so if you want to check in at the office at nine o'clock, you want to get up a couple hours before that, uh, get your shower and breakfast and get the kids ready for school, whatever it is, get your commute and then be ready to check in nine o'clock at the office. And then five o'clock, you know, you come home. And in the winter time, when I've got the sun coming up at eight o'clock in the morning, well, that, that works out pretty well. Get up a little bit before sunrise, get myself ready, get to work, whatever. And then, uh, you know, when, at the end of the work day, that's about when the sun is going down and I come home and I've got the whole evening. There's no daylight, but at least I've got a bunch of hours before I need to go to bed and I can get some things done, uh, watch TV or do some projects or whatever it is I need to do. Uh, well, in the summertime, when I've got that extra six hours of daylight, well, I could have, I, I could do a lot with that extra time uh, outside, do some projects, do some things, uh, and, and wouldn't it be better to reserve that time for later after work instead of having too much time of uh, daylight before work? And, uh, you know, because it's kind of hard to get going on a project before work when you know at a certain point you just have to stop. Uh, let's say, well, I'm, I'm painting the painting the hallway, and if I just had one extra half hour, to, I could finish this, but uh, no, that won't work. I have to get ready to, to go to the office. Versus if I could do that in the, uh, in the evening, right? Then I could say, okay, it's all right. I can go to bed half an hour later. I'll, I'll be fine. So people want to reserve that time or save that daylight time until after work. And what daylight saving time does effectively is it gives everyone summertime hours and wintertime hours for whatever it is they do, whether it's uh, your work schedule, uh, any kind of business schedule, uh, sports, uh, just watching TV, any of that stuff, everything gets uh, a winter time schedule versus a th summertime schedule because we changed the clock. We didn't change the schedule of every business and church and <laughs> store and, and all that stuff. That's, that's all that it does. So um, if there were no daylight saving time here where I live, then uh, sunrise would be about five o'clock in the morning in the summertime and the sundown would be about eight in the evening. Well, uh, trying to get up at five o'clock in the morning when, when you're, you're, the sun, you know, the sunlight kind of naturally resets your body clock and says, it's time to be awake now. Um, well, okay, so let's say I got up at five o'clock in the morning every day and tried to figure out what to do with uh, my, my four hours before I'm at the office. It would be hard to figure that out and, and really, uh, you know, have a nice schedule of, of, of what to do that I wouldn't have to just kind of break away at some point to go to the office. Now, it, now, now if I say that the clock is six o'clock when it's really five o'clock, but I just change the clock to six. Now I've only got three hours of daylight before the office and I've got that extra hour after the office when I can get a few things done. And so that, that's the reason people want to do daylight saving time. Uh, the push now is not necessarily to eliminate daylight saving time. Like for example, in the state of Arizona, they just don't, they don't adjust the clocks. They stay on standard time year round. But the thing with that is uh, then, you know, they are having that, that extra hour before, before going to the office 
and not as much in the evening. Most people, uh, especially if they're used to daylight saving time, would rather um, would rather sacrifice the morning light in the winter time if they could stay on daylight saving time year round. Uh, you know, rather than stay on uh, standard time year round and have that extra hour in the morning in the summertime when it wouldn't be as productive for them. So uh, it all has to do with the, you know, the seasons here on the earth. So as you can see, let's pretend your perspective right now, you're the sun and you're shining here at this earth. And so this, there's a point right here that's going to be, um, you know, closest to the sun basically. And that's also going to be the place where if you're on the, the surface of the earth, if you look up, the, earth, the, the sun will look like it's directly overhead. There's always, at any given time, one spot on the surface of the earth where it looks like the sun is most directly overhead. And as the earth uh, turns, I guess it turns this way, then that spot is going to move, but that will be, uh, but, but, but relative to the sun, it's not moving. This is the spot where, um, you know, the, the sun is most directly overhead. As the seasons change, you know, then uh, that, that, that spot is going to kind of go northward or southward along a certain line there. It's not a perfect line because the Earth's movement is not perfect as you and I might describe perfect, but it is consistent and predictable. So, um, you know, we don't have to worry about it not being exactly perfect. What it does is if you were to say, you know, what spot is going to be the place where, you know, the sun is most directly overhead uh, throughout the season, rather than going straight up and down north to south and, and back again, it's going to form a little bit of a figure eight. And the top part of that is a little more thin than the bottom uh, part. And that's why we have an analemma that you can see on things like a geochron or on some globes, there'll be a little representation of the analemma. The top of the analemma is kind of the northernmost uh, part that the sun, uh, where, where it's you know most directly overhead in what would be summer for us here in the Northern Hemisphere. And then the bottom of the analemma would, would line up with you know, the southernmost track of the sun. Uh, there's kind of an imaginary line of that northernmost part that they call the Tropic of Cancer. And the one down here is called the Tropic of Capricorn. So if you ever see you know, that, that marked on a map or a globe, what is the Tropic of Cancer? That's the imaginary line that marks the northernmost part uh, where, where the sun get, reaches its most northern extreme. Uh, that would be during uh, northern hemisphere summer the Tropic of Capricorn, you know, the opposite for the southern part of the world. So because there's so much variation in the length of day here in the more northern parts of the world and the more southern parts of the world, those are the places where different countries decide they want to have daylight saving time. But uh, the countries that are closer to the equator, they don't really bother with daylight saving time because for them, the time of uh, sunrise doesn't vary that much throughout the year and the time of sunset doesn't vary that much either. So the entire length of daylight maybe only varies for an hour, maybe hour and a half throughout the year if you're very close to the equator. Whereas, you know, like I said, here in Utah, up where I am, you've got six hours difference. So which would you rather have? Would you rather have, uh, you know, daylight saving time year round or standard time year round? Or do you like to, to do the change uh, you know, every few months. When I was a kid, I think it was kind of evenly split. I think we had daylight saving time about six months and standard time about six months. Uh, that's been adjusted over the years until now. We only have about four and a half months of standard time, which is you know, kind of the real time that nature is telling you and based on, uh, you know, uh, the sun reaching its highest point in the sky at noon. Uh, and, and then we do seven and a half months or so of this daylight saving time, where for me, because of my position uh, on the time zone there in Utah, uh, in the summertime, the time of day under daylight saving time, when the sun reaches its highest point, is marked as about 1.30 in the afternoon. So, you know, the middle of the day is 1.30 in the afternoon for us here where I live. If you're closer to Denver, then Denver's kind of in the middle of the time zone. So it's gonna be closer to right on noon or in the summertime, uh, right on one o'clock when you're in daylight saving time. If you are in Denver and you're able to observe the sun's position and kind of mark at what point does it reach its highest point, you would notice that uh, you know, when, you, when you reach, say, what is officially the first day of summer, or the first day of winter, it's gonna be very close to right at noon or right at one o'clock. You're gonna see that sun reach its highest point. 
But then as you watch it over the next few weeks, sometimes it's going to be a little bit before that, uh, that noon or one o'clock daylight time uh, mark. Sometimes it's going to be a little bit after that. And you might think, oh, wait a minute, the, 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 the Earth is speeding up or the Earth is slowing down or it's going back and forth. That's part of that, uh, you know, the, the movement of the Earth not being uh, perfect the way we think of perfect, but it is consistent and predictable. And that's why on the analemma you sometimes see a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit to the west or a little bit of the east to what would be, you know, the absolute middle of the analemma. And that's uh, also shows up in what we call the equation of time, meaning how, how many minutes before that ideal solar noon is it actually happening or how many minutes after. And uh, so I, I, hope, I hope I got that right explaining to you what is the equation of time. So again, which would you prefer? I, they've actually passed legislation here in Utah to stay on daylight saving time year round. And, um, but they can't actually do it. They passed the legislation, but it can't happen because of federal law, which says nobody can do that. Uh, so first of all, federal law has to change. Uh, right now, Arizona can say, well, no, we're, we're going to stay on standard time year round. And that's OK under federal law. And if the state of Utah, if the legislature said, no, we, we also want to stay on standard time year round, we could do that. But to stay on daylight saving time year round has to be a change in Washington to allow that. And also part of the legislation that passed in Utah uh, said that other nearby western states had to decide to do the same thing Utah did in order for it to, uh, to to actually happen. But the law is already in place. If federal law changes and if the nearby states uh, go for it, then we will be on daylight saving time year round. So we'll still have that uh, 6 a.m. sunrise and 9 p.m. sundown in the month of June. But when we get into, uh, say, you know, the month of December, sunrise will, will be about 9 o'clock in the morning and sundown will be about six o'clock in the evening. And I don't know if people are quite prepared to handle that. We'll see what happens in the future if, if that ever does happen here in Utah. 9 a.m. sunrise. There are places in the world where that happens anyway, and people are used to it, especially if you get here to the more northern parts of the world. So, you know, if you get up into Alaska, yeah, you're going to have places where just, you know, when you get deep into the winter, you only have, uh, you know, just, I don't know, uh, an hour, maybe less of, of actual sunshine every day. Uh, but then you get the opposite effect, of course, in the summertime, where it's basically almost, uh, you know, they'd call it the land of the, the midnight sun, where uh, you get the sun is somewhere in the sky, almost 24 hours a day in some places. Uh, and I guess if you were in the North Pole itself that isn't really populated, except for Santa Claus, uh, then you might get, uh, you know, 24 hour sunshine for, for part of the year. But then you'd also you get the opposite effect of 24 hour darkness and the opposite end of the year. There are people actually, you know, living down in Antarctica that experience that researchers. But, uh, you know, that's a very specialized thing to do and place to be. So anyway, did I did I confuse you too much about daylight saving time? Which would you like? I think right now, as much as it kind of is a hassle, I think I'm still used to the idea of sunrise and sunset happening uh, at the times that I'm used to in the winter and the summer. So I think I'll stick with uh, daylight saving time as if I have a choice. Now, it kind of makes me wonder if we did have year round daylight saving time, would there be some businesses and sporting venues and things like that that would have, you know, posted different schedules for summertime hours and wintertime hours in order to uh, you know, adjust to that. Whereas now, since everyone changes their clocks, uh, you know, we kind of by default get summertime hours, wintertime hours, you know, I don't know how it goes. Now, one other thing though that I wanted to consider was uh, I think that when I was a kid growing up, it was easier to adjust to daylight saving time changes because it was a different lifestyle back then. I mean, um, neighborhood where I grew up, probably most of the families, you had one person who worked outside the home and the other person, uh, the, the, you know, the adults, the parents, uh, stayed in the home and took care of the kids. So you only really had one uh, person in the home that had to make that difficult adjustment of, you know, <laughs> showing up at work and doing business uh, at, at different, what, what would feel like different hours to your body. 
Uh, and the rest of them, you know, if the kid needed to take a nap in the afternoon or mom needed to take a, na a nap while the kids are at school to kind of get adjusted to that, that would be easy to do. But in today's world, you know, a lot of dual income families and uh, the, the, the kids, uh, they're, they're, they've, they've scheduled a lot of things. There's a lot going on. And, and in a way, our ability to manage time and to schedule things has allowed us to pack our days and, and pack our, our schedules uh, so much more than maybe we did uh, a generation or two ago. And so I think that, that now that makes it difficult for every member of the family to adjust for daylight saving time, where, like I said, my theory that maybe um, a few decades ago, it was really fewer members of the family that had to make a, a, a really big adjustment. Uh, that, that kind of would go against what your body clock is telling you to do. Anyway, those are just some of my thoughts there. And uh, well, um, see how it goes. Any comments or, or suggestions, uh, you know, let, let me know. But I think daylight saving time is here to stay for a while longer. People are still going to complain about it. But when they get that, uh, you know, that, that evening sunshine in the summertime, they're, they're not going to think that daylight saving time is such a bad thing. Anyway. All right, that's all for now, and I'll have another episode of the Good Timekeeping Show coming very soon, so I hope you will join me for that one too.